Okay, no messing about, straight in. So behind me, there's eggs. There's eggs, guys, straight away. They've been in there for three days. So some of you might not know what I'm talking about. Let me take you back a little bit, just explain what the hell's going on. So one week ago, I created the tank for the electric blue Akara. The goal was to create something that felt natural for the fish, but also was massively impactful on the eye. I do feel we achieved that, but I wasn't expecting success like this so quickly. I moved the fish into the aquarium and pretty much straight away they went and hid. Now they did this for around about half a day. I kept peeking around the back area to see if I could see them. They were starting to get a little bit more brave as time went by. Then I left them alone for a little bit and when I came back I was really happy to see that one of them had come forward. It was the biggest one of the bunch and the most confident as well. And then soon after, almost as if the first one had given the other some confidence, they all started coming forward. This was awesome to see, it made me really excited and I was really happy they were interacting with the environment that I created for them. So yeah, in the space of no time at all, we've got babies. Now it is quite common when you move fish to a new environment, if they're ready to spawn, they will spawn. And that's like a defense mechanism, trying to ensure the survival of the species, that kind of thing. But I honestly was not expecting this at all. I'm so, so happy. Not angry, I did an angry face then. I'm not angry, I'm excited. So yeah, like I say, the fish have been in here now for two days, if that, one and a half. So I kept seeing this one here, this is, I'm pretty sure this is the male. I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's a female. Anyway, right on that leaf where he or she is, oh, it would help if I'd film it. Let's turn this ISO up so we can kind of see. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to cause anything to happen. Now, I can't get straight on. Um, so when you go sideways on glass, look, that's straight on and we get really good focus, but let's see if that works. There we go, that's a little bit better. I'm zoomed right in, by the way. So that bottom leaf there looks kind of Brownie, how? let me try something else. Okay, there we go, I've got it on single point focus. Maybe this will work a bit better. Can you see there, can you make it out? Um, kind of is, kind of isn't, I don't know. But anyway, that whole Amazon sword leaf there is covered in eggs. And you can see, this is either the male or the female, I don't know. I mean, surely that's the male. Look at that, look at that dorsal thing coming right over the back. It does have an egg shooty thing though, but then apparently the men have that as well, also known as a fish willy. <laughs> but yeah, I think what I'm gonna do with this one is leave them to their own devices at the moment anyway. Just leave the fish to do their thing, their parenting, and uh, just observe. And when they get to the point of free swimming wigglers, that's when I, might, when I might remove them and put them in a different tank. Now over here in the Amazon Aquarium, if you remember rightly, our Bolivian rams here, they spawned before as well, uh, got to the point where we had three swimming wigglers and I didn't remove them and as a result, all of the tetras sort of just picked them off one by one, either in the darkness or whatever. So that was a bit sad about that and they haven't actually done it since. Uh, maybe that's because I don't do many water changes, that kind of thing. I'll probably spur it on with a bit of like uh, blood worms and things like that. In fact, I might do that at some point soon. Uh, but moving back over, I mean, thinking about it, this tank isn't full of Tetras, is it? It's just got all of our free blue Akaras in here. So it might be okay um, just, just to leave them to do their own thing completely. There's plenty of places for the babies to hide if they need to. I don't know what they're like as parents. Need to do a bit of research. I haven't really researched anything at the moment. I've just picked up the camera and started filming with you guys because I was just so excited about it. No, don't eat. Are you eating or are you cleaning? Are you prepping? I don't know, it could be because I'm here. Oh no, he's prepping, that's a clean bit. It's okay, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this so soon, so I've not done any research. It's time to put the camera now down now, do a little bit of research, and I can get back to you. Hopefully we can all learn something together. And anyone who knows a lot about these guys, yeah, just chime in whenever in the comments. So it's now day three since I first spotted the eggs, and they're progressing nicely. Everything's still pretty much the same. We've still got the mother or father just hovering there. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be the mother, right? Surely. Anyway, so they're just hovering there, overlooking everything. But guess what? I can now see eyes in the eggs. Okay, so obviously this is going to be really hard to pick out, but there are the eggs on the edge there. Oh no, now they all think I'm feeding. No, it's not feeding time, guys. <laughs> they're all coming forward now. They're completely comfortable with me at this stage. They're not shy at all. And obviously, the, uh, the mother there, it's got to be the mother, isn't it? It's just... Um, hanging over the eggs and always protecting it. So what I do when I'm doing feeding at the moment, I'm sprinkling it over that area so some drops down so that, that one gets food as well. And every time they're all getting food. So yeah, <laughs> awesome fish these are by the way, guys. If you've not kept Blue Akara and you've got a tank big enough, I thoroughly recommend it. They're really, really interesting and fun to watch. But yeah, day three, 
eyes are forming, everything good. So it's now day five since I first saw the eggs on the leaf, guys, and look, the eggs, they're gone. They're not there anymore. I came in yesterday and saw that they weren't there, and I was a bit devastated because I was thinking, oh, that's it, job done. But look, the fish is still hanging around in this area. So I had a little look closer. I noticed that all this gravel looks fresh and it's all been dug up. Now, just below where the fish is hovering there, there's wigglers. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them on camera, to be honest. It's so hard to see. You might be able to just make out in there a little bit of vibrating going on. That's where they're all sat down. He's dug a little hole in the sand bed and they're all just vibrating, basically. Now, I had this before um, in the tank next to it over here with the um, Bolivian rams, I saw the same thing. And then within a couple of days, they're all up free sim swimming in that area. So hopefully that's what we're gonna get. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know, oh look, oh he's seeing off all the other fish there, like completely she. This must be a she, I still haven't worked that out. Can you guys help me? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's happening, it's definitely happening. Now in terms of the tank, I haven't been able to do any maintenance. Well, I have been able to, but I haven't done any maintenance since I set it up at all, apart from testing that the water quality is good. The water quality is all good because we've got an established filter. But if you have a look, it's looking grimy. Um, but I just don't want to risk disturbing anything. It'll only be a few more days before they're free swimming and I can probably move them to a different tank then to grow out. Look, he's coming. they're coming over because they think I'm going to feed, but it's obviously creating some aggression. So I will feed. Uh, this is so cool. <laughs> really interesting to watch this process and see how it works. It's very similar to Bolivian rams, although the, the, the weird thing was that the, the Bolivian rams put the eggs down in this little sand thing straight away, but the Akaras, I'm, I'm comparing them because they're all cichlids, but the Akara, he had them growing out on the leaf and then moved them down to the sand bed, ready for them to be wiggling. I suppose he knows, I keep saying he, she knows that it would uh, it, it's easier to defend down there, so that's probably what's happening. I better feed them now, and I? Tap, tap, tap. Go and lay some on the top. They should dart out any second. Come on, where are you? You wanted the food. Right, that's good. She's coming forward, so she's getting some food, which is great. The other ones, oh, look, in the middle. Here they come now. Coming out. They're not scared of me anymore, so that shouldn't stop them. We're waiting for the food to sort of come round. It's making its way round in the flow. Oh, this is so good. I really want to get there and clean it, but uh, you know, it's not too bad. We've basically got some sort of diatom algae all on this piece of wood, which is directly under the light, so that's to be expected. We've also got some uh, diatoms on the sand and uh, the glass as well. There's a little bit, but you know, it's all it's all going to be easily managed. I can get rid of that in no time. There's no need to panic. Hello, fella. Or milady, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> so we're now at day six. The tank is getting so dirty, it's really starting to aggravate me. I might try and clean the glass at least, but the wigglers down on the sand bed are really going nuts now. Definitely gonna be lifting up off that sand bed in the next day or two, maybe even today, hopefully. If we look in that gap there, hopefully that's picking it all up. Turn it up a bit. You should be able to see lots of wiggling going on down there like that little grey, that's all the eyes of the fish just going nuts. Oh, yes, they're definitely big enough to start taking up or start lifting up soon. I know this because of, like I say, the experience with the Bolivian rams. So yeah, sometime today for sure. But look at the state of this tank now. Look at all of the algae on the wood. Oh, you can't, you can't even focus past the foreground on the glass. <laughs> I might give the glass a scrape just so we can see what we're doing as time goes on. And um, this is not gonna be long now, it really isn't. So now that we really are getting close to the point where they're gonna be free swimming, I need to prepare some tanks for them. Now I'm putting them back in the same tank that the parents were in. It's completely empty, um, it's established, and it's got like a nice layer of mulm on the bottom. It's quite clean, but not so clean that you know there's gonna be nothing for the babies to peck at. I'll also be feeding in there like a baby food, which is basically ground up, um, you know, like, I don't know, like a pellet or something. It's just like ultra fine powder for feeding. Now, I've looked into it. Ultimately, like baby brine shrimp are the best, but I didn't get great success with the hatch rates. I had one really good hatch rate trying it and the rest didn't go so well. And so many people use the method of, of using this sort of powder feed, for, especially for fry. So I think we'll be absolutely fine with that. Um, see how it goes. Right guys, it's the same day, but uh, we've had progress since the last little clip. The mother has moved the fry. So there's the mother there. And look, right out in the open now, Right, are there, look, they're just vibrating like crazy. 
so I don't think it's going to be long. They're going to be up and moving about. Now, I think they could take the decision to not intervene. So last time I felt like I should have intervened, you know, with the Bolivians, which I keep comparing them to. But look, look at how many Tetras in there. There's no way they were able to defend that. Whereas I think the mother here is going to be fine. I'm going to leave them to their own devices. I mean, we've had this happen now. They're quite easy to breed. If anything does happen to the eggs, it's going to happen again, isn't it? They're going to respawn. And then next time I'll actually take them out. But for this time, I think I'm just going to sit back and just observe and enjoy it. You know, um, my Pistogramas recently, I picked out a load of fry from their tank that was heavily stocked and a lot smaller than this. And I've got them down here, you see, in this tank. So where are they? Oh, there they are. There we go. Hello. See, we've got loads of them. They're growing nice and big now. I mean, I say big, that's about one centimeter. So, you know, less than an inch, but they're getting there. They were even smaller than that when I first put them in here. The good thing about this is I can just come in and do a little sprinkle of food very often. So we're putting on size to them. That's just an example of where you can get lots of fish being um, born and growing out without actually having to intervene. I think that's ultimately the style of fish keeping I'm into. You know, I don't want to have a load of fish breeder tanks and stuff like that I, I like to sit back and observe more than anything it's my hobby and that's how i i like doing it the only reason i put them in here is because i you know changed the whole tank up didn't i i reset it sort of thing so i thought well i might as well ensure the survival seeing as i'm taking them out anyway but yeah that's not what i'm going to do with this one we're just going to leave it alone and i think we're going to have good success if i'm honest look it looks like she's picked a really good spot in this corner to defend it's like she's deliberately gone as far in there as she can we've got this piece of wood there's uh, like a view a view block up they're only coming over here now because they see me here and they think they're going to get fed but other than me stood here like this, they've not been over here at all. So I think, fingers crossed anyway, that we're gonna be you know, in for some success here. Now I will admit, part of me was feeling pressured like into doing the whole taking them out and, and growing up in a separate tank thing, because I know that's what quite a few people wanted me to do previously, but I have to do what I wanna do in my hobby to be able to enjoy it and keep making content for you guys. Like part of my hobby at the moment isn't taking out little fry growing them, it's just not what I'm into at the moment. I, I wanna see what happens in the tank, like naturally, you know, cause I have, I've never seen it before, you know, with these fish anyway. So let's face it as well. I don't want a hundred percent survival rate. There's, there's no way I could look after that many blue Acaras. There's gotta be like 300 fry there. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave them in there. Hopefully a load of them will just like be able to hide there's so many places to hide here they won't get picked off i'm hoping and we can see one two three you know the strongest and fittest and smartest will survive that's that's what i'm hoping for anyway so now the time has come it's the end of the day i've got to go home now it's 5 p.m and um i suspect by the time we come in in the morning these wigglers are going to be up and swimming about in this area Fingers crossed anyway, I'm in at 5 a.m. So I'm gonna be able to see them straight away and hopefully observe everything. And in fact, I'm gonna feed these guys now. So if they come up soon, then there's even less chance of them going for them. I don't think they're going to anyway. At the end of the day, this is the biggest fish in here and it's very quick if anyone comes near. So hopefully we come in tomorrow, everything's all good. Morning guys, right, it's 5.30 a.m. So the wigglers, they've not come up into the water yet. They're not free swimming, um, but they're vibrating like crazy. Okay, still in the same position. Uh, Mum has moved them slightly. You remember she brought them out into the open and now they're just, yeah, this is gonna be quite difficult. They're so far at the back there. Anyway, they're still alive and that is the main thing. So I reckon within the next 12 hours, they're gonna be up, so today for sure. I'm actually putting this video out today so they might not be up before you guys see this, but know that if you're watching this right now, they're probably swimming at this point. <laughs> just as before these guys are staying separate and also yesterday when i mentioned to you guys about having the epistogramma and them growing out in their own tank without intervening i forgot about one massive collection of fry that i've brought up on my own as well by letting the parents do all the work and i am of course talking about the crebensis fry for my african river tank tank so look at these guys see there's absolutely tons of them now i just left these in the tank and they all grew out. The male didn't eat them, and there was nothing else in the tank with them as well. It was just the, the dad and the mum at that point as well. Um, so they, yeah, look, look at the survival rates. I've got so many in here, they're getting a good size now as well. Even better coloration, it's happening more and more, and some of them are starting to get the pink bellies on them as well. Let me turn that up a little bit so you can see. Yeah, earlier on when the uh, lights had just come on, and they were showing pink bellies, but there's actually sort of faded away a bit now. But yeah, basically we get some really good coloration, but that's a great example that I really, really enjoyed 
of just uh, leaving the tank to do its own thing and letting, the, letting nature take its course. And as a result, we've got an absolute ton of crib babies. There's, there's dad, looking good. Hello buddy, you all right? No, he's not scared of me now. I am literally right up to the glass here and he's not bothered at all. He used to just dart away and I'd never see him. But um, since I moved into this tank with tons of hiding spaces, he seems to come out way, way more than before. Oh look, good work, bristle nose on that leaf. I just saw another one as well dotted about. <laughs> just peeking over the top there, there's one of our golden varieties as well. Yeah, this tank is actually a month old now, guys. I'm gonna be doing a big update soon, a full rundown of what's happened, how it's gone, problems, and where we're at now. Where we're at now is a really good place, I've gotta say. Like, everything is growing amazing. The new Belix of Japonica is chucked in there, which is not an African plant, but uh, looks great. That's growing awesome. There was a few little die-off leaves, but now it's starting to really sprout out. That section's gonna look so good in, like, say, a month's time or so. Ah, there we go, look, there's another one of our bristlenose plecos they're, so they're golden but they've got blue eyes is it picking up the blue it should be i hope it is anyway that really vibrant and blue eyes is so cool and you know what i've actually seen some bristles or the start of bristles on some of them here in here which hopefully means we've got male and female we can get some breeding going on i'm actually ordering at the moment some pleco caves because i've got my two big plecos in the other room haven't i yeah, so down in this tank here, which is an absolute mess currently because I fed them one of those algae wafers and it looks like they've just completely ripped it apart and put particles of like dust and that everywhere. But yeah, there are two um, plecos in here, male and a female. We can't ever see them though, I mean, partly because, <laughs> I mean, look at the amount of plants I've got going in, on in there. But what I wanna do is get like um, the caves and stack them so that then they can go in there and I can just shine a torch in and look at them. I guess that's the real way to keep plecos if you wanna be able to see them, because otherwise, you, you just have this now i could find them quite easy because it's a small tank and i could move a few things around but imagine if this was like a big tank you would never see them so i could never understand when i used to watch videos of people with like you know racks like mine here but they'd have um, um completely bare bottom and then i'd have a load of the the caves dotted in amongst the um the, the tank and then just a sponge filter and i thought well that's not very enjoyable but then if you're just getting it for the fish and not what i do which is more of a um you know aquascaped set of tanks if it's just about the fish it makes complete sense because you can come in with your torch you can look inside all the caves and i'm pointing at it like i've got it i haven't got it because mine's planted so you know for instance my epistogramma pair that we've got here come on then you're going to come out i'll come i'll feed you if you come out so i did a really big cleanup of the ca uh, the tank yes i was gonna say cage then <laughs> a cage for fish would not work would it oh look here he comes did a big clean up of this tank yesterday. I wiped down all the sides, took out some of the floating plants because it was covering the whole surface. And um, he's been a little bit shy since because it's the first time I've done like that, like that sort of deep clean to it. I did it to this tank and I did it to this tank because this is where the blue Acara were before. And um, now it's ready for something else. These guys are going in their own setup soon. I'm gonna do something quite cool down here um, next to our new better tank. Where is he? His ghost. Everyone's saying, oh, you've already called a fish ghost. Yeah, it was kind of a nod to my old ghost who I really enjoyed, one of my goldfish that died a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I think, it, oh, I've lowered the water level. I was a little bit worried about jumping, so I didn't know the fish. Um, some fish jump, some fish don't. Some people say all fish jump, but um, honestly, some of my betters have never ever jumped. And I wasn't sure on the personality and characteristics of this fish. So I've lowered the water level just for the time being. And um, yeah, he's not a jumper by the looks of things. I mean, it makes sense. He's got all these big fins, so he probably doesn't jump very well anyway. So what I'll probably do is just raise this up an inch and leave another inch like without any water in. But yeah, he's going great. Tank is looking good, like all good so far. No algae. Oh, there's a tiny little bit of hair algae on that plant there. That's from where I got it from another tank, but that's actually dying off and it's like white and wispy, which is awesome. Now next to it is the tank that I want to do for the epistogramma. Same size tank, but um, you know, I think it really suits those kind of fish. It's just the right size. And obviously all of this is coming out. This is just plant storage, you see. So what I've got is um, some cling film on the top and that just locks in any moisture. Then we've got like an inch of well, no, a couple of inches of water. I always do it so it just comes up to that point on the um, cups. And we've got quite a few plants in there. 
I used most of the plants in here for the blue acara tank. So these will be coming out and going down the bottom here in this plant storage area. I put, put them in this one, to be honest, with the duckweed. Um, and yeah, that frees up that tank completely for something really cool. So look out for that one because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, I think I'm going to use Dragonstone. I haven't used Dragonstone for a long, long time. And I think if I place it next to this one with a dark substrate, let's go black substrate, not Aquasaur, but like finer sand. And we've got black substrate with Dragonstone versus the Sirius Stone and white. How good would that look? Like a complete contrast. I need to cover all this up as well, don't I? Really, really ugly. My Alexa's there, but I can move that. These are all different lights and pipes and things like that. I just sort of put them back there and uh, forget that they're there. <laughs> you know, when you put stuff in somewhere and you're like, oh, I'll use that. That could be useful at a later date. And then you just completely forget about it. <laughs> So it is all hustle and bustle in the fish studios at the moment. Now by next video, those fry are gonna be up and swimming around, aren't they? I think it's gonna be really interesting to watch the behavior of the blue car in the tank, you know, the fry in the tank. Do they act differently to what I've seen before? It was very different with the um, Crebentis because they pretty much stayed in the cave and followed the parents everywhere. Will these guys do the same? Tune in next time for another episode of MG Fish. <laughs>